how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're going to take a look at a 1987 Volkswagen Vanagon. This Vanagon has a problem where it's misfiring and stalling and this is a really hard car. They've put every part on this car you can put on it for missing and stalling and it still has the same problem. So the first thing I want to do, since I can't put a scan tool on it, I'm going to tackle this car just like I would any other car. I need an oscilloscope and I'm going to connect it and get some basic signals and I'm going to also put a gas analyzer on it so I can get some combustion results out of the vehicle. So let's go ahead and get that scope connected. Okay guys, I've got my scope connected. Let me show you what I've done. I've connected channel 1, yellow, to the negative side of the coil. Channel 2, red, is on the positive side of the coil. Channel 3 is on an injector, that's green. Channel 4, blue, is on the O2 sensor. And channel 5, white, is on the crank position sensor, which is in the distributor. Now the whole distributor's been replaced, the wires, the spark plugs, the injectors, the air door has been replaced, and the computer has been replaced. The car still has the same problem. So once you put almost every part on the car that you can that would make it miss or stall, how do you fix the car? Well, that's what I want to show you. Basic troubleshooting, basic thought structure. Let's use a scope, let's use the exhaust gas analyzer. Now let's go start the car and get some data. running the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the gas traces. I've got 500 parts per million on the 8C. That's raw gasoline so I'm not burning my gas. That's a misfire. The CO is pretty low at 0.19. The CO2 is real low, 7.1 or 2. This should be 14-15% on the CO2. Remember I'm taking gas, hydrocarbons, and converting them with oxygen to make the CO and CO2. When this number is high, it shows that I got good efficiency. When the CO2 is low, it shows I don't have good efficiency. But I have a problem right now. I have 5% oxygen. So either I've got a lot of oxygen coming out or I've got a leak in the exhaust. Now this lambda is 1.4. That's 40% too lean. Now a too lean, that's gonna give me a problem being too lean. It might stall in this fire. But I need to prove this oxygen, so I want to show you guys a trick. The first thing I want to do is I want to take a rag and I want to plug that exhaust. As soon as you plug the exhaust, it should build up so much pressure it blows your hand off. And that's not happening. When I plug it, I can hear a leak under there. So I have false oxygen. I have false oxygen getting into this. With a high oxygen number, you can no longer look at lambda reliably. But I can still look and see I have a miss because I got a lot of HC coming out and my CO2 is not high. I'm not converting that gas with the oxygen that's being burned. So my combustion efficiency is very low and I'm misfiring. So let's take a look at the scope now. Okay, now that we know that the gases are not being combusted efficiently, let's go ahead and look at the scope data. First thing I want to do, I want to make sure my leads are connected. I'm using five leads, I've got five connected. Now let's go ahead and get some data. Okay, right here, do you see this guy? The computer is turning on and off the coil. So that's like the current, the computer thinks the current is over kerning and it's trying to shut it off. But every time it shuts this off, it's putting that noise into the computer system which is a problem. So let's go over here and look at this. So we can see these multiple strikes right here. Let's get this way low. Now do you see how you can start to see that noise riding on some of these other signals? like the oxygen sensor. So that noise is going to affect the whole computer from cycling that coil really fast. So I think the computer thinks I'm overcurrenting and it's trying to do a current limit. So the first thing I need to do is put an amp clamp on the ignition coil and see what the current is. So let's do that. 
I'm going to use channel 6 purple for my amp clamp. So now I need to go into 6. And we need to set it up. And we want a 0, 6. Now we want to get around the main feed wire, the power going in. Now what we want to do is we want to get a... That engine sounds like it's going to stall. Okay, so that's the problem right there. It's stalling, guys. They said it did. This is my current ramp. And you can see how it's a slow rise up. The coil is not shorted. And basically, we're only pulling about 8 amps. So a coil, an ignition coil, 8 amps is what I would expect it to pull. But you know, I don't know about something this old, what they pull. But most coils are going to pull 8 to 15 amps. So we might think that's okay. But I don't think that's okay. I think that the computer watches how fast it rises and it sees that it's too fast for the, the program. So what I want to try to do is put a ballast resistor on this. I'm going to get a ballast resistor that's adjustable and we'll adjust it to where we can see if we can get the coil to stop multi-striking. So let me get that and get that on there. Okay, this is my adjustable ballast that I'm going to use. And basically, this is a 200 watt, so this will be a sufficient where even if I had 8, eight amps and by 12 volts, this will be okay and we're not going to fry it. So I'm going to put this in line and then we're going to see if I, when I twist this, if we can get this thing adjusted to see if this will fix this problem. Okay, so I got the ballast set up. So we can see that we're multi-striking right there. So I want to add a little ballast. Before we do that, let's look at the gases. So the gases are still misfiring at 2.3. CO is still really low. Oxygen's got a leak. We've already proven that out. Now let's give a little ballast right there. It's not multi-striking. Did you see we started to get fuel control? The fuel control is the blue one. So the blue is the oxygen sensor. It's cable to control right now. I'm going to take the ballast out. We start multi-striking and we have no fuel control. It totally lost control. So we don't got good control there. So I'm going to put a little ballast in. Right there, I got rid of my multi-strike, and you can start to watch the O2, and we can see that the O2 is going to have some control now. And we can also see the gases get better, and I can hear the motor get better when I put a little ballast and I get that multi-strike out of it. Okay, guys, this is really cool, right? Can you believe that this dinosaur needs a ballast resistor and that fixes his problem? The one thing I'm worried about is the coil is on the whole time right now. I don't have an off time. So I really need a smaller ballast resistor that I can more accurately calibrate. So I carry one in my car. So let me get that and try to get this ballast set up a little bit better because I don't want to burn the coil up either. We don't want it on all the time. When we come over here, That's the coil. You see how it stayed all on until it turned off? The current stays on until we fire. I want to have a little more control, so I want to make sure we don't smoke the coil. But that ballast resistor fixed this car's problem. And I'm sure it's going to probably need to be driven and burn the plugs out now that we get it running, and it will totally fix the car. But since the ballast is on, it's definitely running better and smoother 
Then my 8C came way down too. It was 500, now we're at 200. My conversions come up a little bit better too. So the computer's doing a better job without multi-striking. Let me go get that other resistor so we can, I can tune it a little bit better to see what we can get done. Okay guys, I got my, my adjustable ballast resistor. That's what this is. You can see the resistor goes up here. Never touch it because it'll be really hot. You move this band clamp up and down and I can change the resistance. Now what I did was I tried to get it where I just maybe get a multi-strike every now and then, but the coil has less dwell time because I'm worried about burning up the brand new coil they have on here. So we don't want the coil to just stay on, we want it to come on and shut off. And I've got that right now. So we'll cut this off and then I'll make a case, I'll put this in a box and it will stay on the car. We can see the gases, we're way lower. This is a 500 parts per million, now we're at two. I've got a better conversion, so we're converting the gases a little bit better, and we can see that we're controlling the O2 now, where before we had no control. Now remember, the O2 is in the exhaust with leaks in it. That's gonna affect your overall gas rates. So we're gonna, they're gonna need to fix the exhaust and then this car will be really good. And we also need to adjust the CO2 on the air door. That's a new air door. There's an adjustment back here. Once we get the exhaust fixed, we'll adjust the final CO2 adjustment. And then this vehicle will be re returned to the customer. Okay, guys, this is crazy, isn't it? Sometimes you just gotta think outside the box. When you put every single part on the car and it still doesn't fix it, you're gonna have to start to look at the data very carefully and analyze it. And sometimes you get an unconventional repair like we have here. If you guys use scopes and you use an analytical approach, you too will have good troubleshooting in your base.